Greetings and welcome to my presentation, Prometheus and Themis, Blending the Binary. My name is Mark Warford. I'm chair of Modern Classical Languages at Buffalo State College. Section 1, Introduction. In the Alien Prometheus film franchise envisioned by Ridley Scott, a hyper-masculine race of engineers is ultimately overcome by a raw, gooey, dark substance of raw creative material. If we further deconstruct this material for its mater aspect, the underlying archetypal narrative centers on the ultimate revenge of the Great Mother, a literal material or material upheaval against being engineered. In the face of Promethean inflation, she proclaims, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Such is a familiar trope that has circulated in modern media for some time from the classic margarine commercial of the 1970s, pictured here, to the driving force behind the plot line of Avatar. Villains like Poison Ivy. Any movie in which Alice Creed plays the villain. or for that matter, the queen alien in all her cinematic guises. Gaia, the great mother, unleashes her titanic wrath either upon or through the Promethean technologies that drive the modern grid. Mass consumerism, it has been argued, represents a facet of this material upheaval. The overall picture is decidedly titanic, which makes sense given that the icons of which we speak are, if nothing else, titans, and it presents us with the prima materia that drives the present investigation. According to Jung, quote, the cinema, like the detective story, makes it possible to experience without danger all the excitement, passion, and desirousness which must be repressed in a humanitarian ordering of life, quote, unquote. Rowland, extending the detective metaphor from a post-Jungian feminist critique, connects it to the trickster archetype, finding at its source a sense of play with the sign and the spirit that drives its signification. With regard to the monstrous materia so iconically captured in the Alien Prometheus franchise, the trickster detective offers just the sort of alchemical equipment required for the present investigation. Quote, so detective fiction is truly trickster-like in discovering and uncovering the earth goddess as the bleeding corpse of the modern world. Fortunately, a goddess can be revived by reconnecting the making of meaning with the carnal body. Detective fiction does this. And this comes from Rowland, page 13. Borrowing from Rowland's detective approach to critical examination and the critical union approach of circumambulating psychic material, the present investigation undertakes multiple incremental passes. At the very superficial level of examination, we initially examine the binary casing of the natural and the technological, tracing there some of the key artifacts of the Prometheus narrative from martyrdom to monotheism and the current era of globalization and technological innovation, manifestations of what prosunion scholars called the Age of Titanism. Though subsumed and sublime, the feminine subtext follows close behind, overlaying a rich ontological framework that takes more historical and archetypal material into account than has previously been acknowledged in either anthropology or union studies. The driving thesis of this section is that the feminine acts as a sort of sublime shadow participant in Aeschylus's Prometheus Unbound, and a complementary mythologem to the Prometheus narrative, the Titanus Gaia Themis. Themis, whose contribution to the archetypal sediment of the Western psyche has either been systematically or unconsciously relegated to its shadow. In coaxing Themis from the shadows, we discover an underlying piston in the engine of cultural striving. 
Though the present investigation draws primarily from Rowland's feminist critique of Jung, it also makes extensive use of Karenyi's formable, formidable detective work as a scholar of Greek mythology. In addition, Gier's and Lopez Pedraza's discourses on Prometheus and Titanism further amplify these archetypes. Finally, Wolfgang Giekrich's controversial critique of monotheism serves as a useful counterweight to draw out the core binary to which this investigation must necessarily subject a blend, the one and the many. With the exception of Gier, all of the aforementioned authors build on Jung's heir, James Hillman, whose archetypal psychology brought Jung's analytical psychology out of the boardroom and into culture. Section 2, Introducing Titanism and the Shadow Feminine. The present investigation must first address the iconic juxtaposition of masculine engineers and feminine rendered in monstrous form. There is a lot to unpack here, but what immediately presents itself is the titanic aspect which pervades the filmic texts that we have introduced here. With regard to Prometheus and Themis, Rowland's Gothic feminine critique highlights the enlightenment aspect of the former and the Gaia nature of the latter, though they are not directly addressed. Clarkson, Gere, Claremont, and Claremont de Castillejo lay the foundation of the Promethean industrial foundry and collectively highlight the distinction between masculine production or self-creation and feminine reproduction that drives so much of the plot material of the modern sci-fi horror genre. Section 2.1, Titanism. According to Karenyi, the Titans are associated with a similarly inflated pre-civilized cult of the first men, the Kaberoi. Like their predecessors, the Titans share the same excessive masculinity and exile narrative. While the Titans were cast out by Zeus and the Olympians, these predecessors, the Kiberoi, were, depending on the account, either annihilated or exiled by the women of Lemnos. Just as the Titans dismembered Dionysus, an archetypally feminine deity, so must the scholar work to remember such scraps on the male-dominated editing floor of Western civilization. To this end, Rowland's feminist critique of Jung's feminine other, rooted in the Gothic dimension of the Romantic period, is particularly useful not only for a feminist revision of Jung's psychology, but for our purposes, it informs a feminist critique of the Prometheus archetype. Though it commands its own attention, Rowland's Gothic guise of the feminine other nonetheless returns to our investigation as a key piece of the puzzle in understanding the complex but complementary meaning systems that pervade the Prometheus legend. Section 2.2, The Gothic Feminine. The rise of Gothic art, according to Rowland, quote, challenges the Enlightenment suppression of the other, yet serves to restore existing norms by expelling the terrifying sublime, unquote. Rowland defines the Gothic romantic sublime as, quote, pain or pathos felt in the gap between what can be conceived and what can be imagined or represented, unquote. The sublime, she contends, subverts, quote, enlightenment, confidence, and reason and language as sufficient resources to re represent or secure truth, unquote, thus haunting enlightenment essentialism. For Rowland, a feminist revision of Jungian thought serves as a bridge from romantic to postmodern senses of the sublime. The first casualty here includes grand theory aspects of Jung's psychology, and the weapon, according to Rowland, is Jung's own Gothic dream figure, an anima presence manifested as a, quote, sick female, female ghost, unquote, next to whom he would not lie. Like Gothic narratives, Jung's own ghost story is built upon the erosion and recuperation of boundaries between natural and supernatural, masculine and feminine. In the postmodern era, Rowland sees the Gothic feminine continuing in depictions of, quote, the nightmare of technology and its assault upon the modern self, unquote. On a related note, it is worth pointing out that the original romantic tension between the masculine and feminine conveys the same sense of sublime horror. A perfect example which reflects the figure of focus is the Prometheus franchise, 
which pits a hyper-masculine race of engineers, obviously cut from the Enlightenment cogito cloth against a dark, creative, multi-dimensional muck that they presume, they presume to control. This mucky material, which may be used to produce many forms, is centered on a matriarchal queen. The key distinction here is one of reproduction versus production. 